dear students, I especially welcome I you to the students. special um, facilitation today uh, of uh, EPU 808. It's like perhaps the last role of facilitation. Of course, this is the last week of the facilitation as scheduled by the university timetable. Uh, I want to assure you that you will get the best even as usual. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, girl students. We continue again and see what we can do concerning our content. And this is the fourth one, and we want to consider scheme of work, work plan, and daily lesson plan. So at the end of this facilitation period you should be able to explain this scheme of work properly okay? should be able to break the unit plan into daily lesson plan and okay? should be able to write a detailed daily lesson plan let's consider lesson preparation the preparation for classroom teaching refers to all forms of activities put in place by the teacher before the classroom teaching encounter. This is also called pre-active teaching activity. Good preparation precedes a good performance. There are two vital forms of preparation. We have informal pre-active teaching activities and the formal pre-active teaching activities. Let's consider informal preactive teaching activities. These are the various forms of preparations without documented evidence. The things you carry out, the things you do in form of preparation, whether it is seen or not seen, whereas they are not documented, such include the scheme, the selection of next topic, data collection, sorting of the data and the organization of your data, then decisions on choice of teaching methods, selection of instructional materials, and so on. When you talk of uh, formal pre-active teaching activities, we are talking of the preparations which must be documented. It is ethical to do so in accordance with teaching ethics and it is wrong when not done. Of course, if you don't document them, you are cheating, you are not teaching. Two vital documents that we keep in the teaching process and we prepare then before teaching a weekly plan, weekly plan, and then daily lesson plan. At times we call it lesson notes. That weekly plan also, at times we call it the unit plan. Now let's talk about the scheme of work. Scheme of work is a documented plan of topics for classroom teaching, which is broken down into weekly topics. This is done by the teacher at the beginning of the term. You see, you look at the curriculum and then break it into years or levels. And then break the year's work into terms. You now break the term's work into weeks. So that when you be breaking up into weeks, what you call scheme of work for that term. So this is recorded as the first half of uh, what you call the subject diary. That is where you record your scheme of work. Then when it is completed, it is recorded at the other half end of the subject diary. That means the scheme of work is a proposal, it's a plan. 
when you implement it and you achieve it at the end of the week or when you have completed that unit then you record it at the end of a series of lessons you have that unit then you now record it in a place in the in the, the subject diary and we call this one a record of work that is done now however this the place you record is is called uh the diary we have various subject diaries so so in discussing this we will consider it in these uh, three parts the role of the teacher and the weekly plan or unit plan then the format of a unit plan what's your role as a teacher so you break down the curriculum content into each year it's your duty or each class then you break the year into terms you also break the terms into topics of the week so it documents both the scheme of work and record of work inside the subject diary so the record of work is kept at the end of each week That's this week we have covered this you put it under record of work in uh, the subject diary what's the importance of scheme of work Obviously, you know that it serves as a guide and work plan to follow. It helps in sequencing arrangement of topics in the degree or level of task that is required from a lower level, lower task level to higher task level, from simple to typical. It also serves as a reminder of sequence of work to follow. When I finish this topic, that's the next one I should take. When I finish this one, that should be the one to follow. Then, the exercise provides a good learning experience and involvement in curriculum implementation. Teacher is a stakeholder in the curriculum and is core in, in the task of implementing the curriculum. The weekly lesson plan. This is also called unit plan. A weekly plan is a broad unit of base concept capable of being broken into more than one daily lesson notes. A unit plan is a broad unit of base concept capable of being broken into more than one daily lesson concept. Now, what are we saying? Uh, circle theorem, for instance. And the, the SS2 is a unit. It's a unit of concept, and you can't finish it in the lesson, so you break it down to three or four lessons, as the case may be, and we go beyond that. So you have to break it down. At times, unit plan may coincide with weekly plan, and it can go beyond it. So unit plan is a uh, broad unit of this concept capable of being broken into more than one daily lesson content let's see the format okay weekly plan now it must have the class it must have the topic then it must have objectives for the week then you do you, you, you do not break it into daily lesson topic if you have five five uh, five, five, five lessons in the week you break the unit into five then out of this each one of them you break out the lesson objectives then the teaching aids that you are going to use in, in, at each uh, at each lesson be able to think ahead prepare it ahead then also the class activities see now how do you display it? the format the class the topic the objective could be written out whereas uh, the daily lesson topic the daily lesson objective and teaching is 
and class activity could be written in a tabular form. You just take a, 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 a unit and prepare, prepare a, 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 a unit plan following this format and present it. So let's consider daily lesson plan notes. A lesson plan is also referred to as lesson notes. So a daily lesson plan is a plan activity of the teacher before the classroom encounter, wherein the teacher writes in a formally ordered and steps of what is to be taught in single lesson of 30 to 40 minutes. Take note, it has to be planned activity. It's formally documented. That's a form a pattern of which which you are going to write it. So the specific behavioral objectives of the lesson, the, the entry behavior, the activity involved, the teaching aids, the teaching strategies, the development of the content sequentially laid out in steps, evaluation techniques, and the closure of the building that anything could happen. For instance, if the, the supervisor comes around to assess you, if your name is not there. Maybe the type that just tear the original copy away and you don't have your code there. If your code is not there, the code, he can record that score of EDU 335.435. can record that of 435 to 335. But if your GSM contact is on the note that you are taking away, even when it was submitted, even when it is submitted finally. Something could be amiss. Something may be wrong. So we're able to contact you. Especially for us that are distance learner. So it's very important. They're not easily accessible. But when all these things are there, easily we can find out. We can have information that will help us and guide us to document your your, your, your grade, your score. Then the typical should be there. Then the level you are. All these things will guide. The supervisor must make comments, so it has to be there. But in ordinary conventional lesson plan, this one will not be necessary because the normal daily routine of the teacher. Now let's consider some exposition on daily lesson plan. Now, vital comments, uh, vital components of a lesson plan, as we mentioned, the behavioral objectives, the content, the content, the evaluation, the instructional material, the learn activities. These are very, 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 very important. We call up the work. Then, there should be a vital one-to-one -one correspondence relationship between the, learner, uh, the instructional objectives or your behavioral objectives, the content, and your evaluation. Very important. That means what you want to achieve is what you teach, and what you teach is what you evaluate. That's the order it has to go. Now, why do you think a lesson plan is necessary? Why do you need it as a teacher? So, a well-prepared lesson plan will help the teacher to avoid errors. If you are controlling the class, you are explaining the process, you are also writing the tendency of having, committing, or uh, making a mistake. It could be, you know, your, 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 your system might fail you at times. You are a human being. But once you have it there, you can always occasionally refer to it and go back to the board and go back to your explanation. So, you'll be able to avoid essential things. Uh, you'll be able to avoid the uh, omission of essential things. Then, it avoid distraction. Students can ask questions or something can happen that you miss sway you away from what you want to achieve for that day. But when you have your lesson plan, you cannot be distracted so much. Then it helps you to manage time and resources. Now, in terms of instructional materials also, it helps you. In terms of teaching methods, it guides, it helps. Sequentially, you present your lesson. It helps you because you have laid down already just matter of presentation now. So, you able to see how it flows. Then, it gives confidence and remove nervousness.
when you have a well planned lesson well documented lesson we teach with confidence and boldness then others can stand in proxy for any reason you are not around once somebody another teacher takes a lesson you can stand in for you and teach because you write your lesson plan <clears throat> you can always think out and uh, image mirror your class before the time therefore you'll be able to think of new ways of teaching and select it helps you to select out activities that are well thought of because you have prior you have prior imagination of your class so you can always think of activities for your student then you plan to cater for individual differences because you have sat down to think over this so it makes it easier to connect old and new lessons finally do this using the format of a lesson plan that you have considered in this facilitation assuming that you are on your teaching practice prepare a lesson note on any concept of GSS to mathematics which you will teach in 40 minutes make your summation before this time of next week thank you